Hey, Pastor Gary here. Hope you're having a great day today. Uh, thank you for tuning in to today's Wednesday Word. Um, first of all, Happy New Year to everyone. You know, just uh, want to really talk about uh, some things that have been going on lately, and and, and they s- seem to just come in waves. Uh, you know, I also kind of oversee uh, the um, prayer line, and you know, there's there's ebbs and flows with with the prayer line. Uh, and first of all, I want to thank Lisa Weaver for for really she's the one that handles it, manages it, just kind of oversee it. But there we've been getting a lot of prayer requests for just healing and people being sick and love loved ones being lost, and that's really you know that's a burden uh, to see that. And and it's although although it's an honor to to pray for those and to stand with those uh, and and lift those petitions up, it is a burden because your heart hurts for those people that are you know physically hurt and and sick or those that have lost loved ones and. You know, one of the things that I want to talk about today is one of the names of God, and that's Jehovah Rapha, and and that's the Lord that heals. Uh, you know, and and that's who we should be going to. We should be praying to God for everything. But you know, that's that specific name, Jehovah Rapha. I want to kind of dive deep into what that what that name means. And so, as we get st- as we get going into that, uh, let's pray for those that are hurting. Let's pray for those that have lost loved ones. Let's pray for those that need that healing. Amen. Let's pray, Father God. We just come to you right now, Father, Father, and we do lift up. Uh, those on the those people on the prayer request, Father. Those that are not on the prayer request, Father, Father. I pray for healing. I pray for comfort, Father, Father. I don't pray for a healing by by our wants, Father. We pray for healing by Your will, Father, Father. Either whether that's here on earth or in eternity in heaven, Father, Father. We are praying for a supernatural healing, Father, Father. We thank You that we can come and learn more about You, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Amen. So. <clears throat> Again, Jehovah Rapha means, you know, is the God of the Lord who heals. And, and the word Rapha is used some 60 times in the Old Testament. And it means to repair, to restore, to heal, or to cure physically, emotionally, and spiritually. If you go back into the Old Testament, we look at 1 Kings 18.30. We get a picture of what Rapha means when we read that Elijah repaired the altar of Jehovah. In 2 Kings, in 2 Kings 2.21, God heals the water when Elisha throws salt in the spring. The word has the idea of restoring something to its original state. Sometimes we need healing in all three areas at the same time. That's emotional, that's physical, that's spiritual. Let's look at David when he cried out in Psalm 6, 2 through 3. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am pining away. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are dismayed and my soul is greatly dismayed. But you, O Lord, how long? So emotional, right? Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am pining away or I'm faint physically. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are dismayed. They're in agony. Or spiritually, my soul is greatly dismayed or in anguish. O Lord, how long? There are other times when it's just one area that needs healing. Let's look at emotionally healing. You know, God reveals himself as Jehovah Rapha when we need that emotional he- that emotional healing. Let's look at, you know, Psalms 147.3. He says, uh, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Now in Hebrew, the word, the word uh, that word for broken is, is shavar. And it means to burst, to break into pieces, to crush and to smash. Some of you might be feeling that way right now. Your emotional pain is overwhelming. Whatever pain you are carrying around, give it to the healer today. Give it to Jehovah Rapha today. Some of you have an incredibly have this incredible intense pain. I can't even begin to relate to the pain that you're going through. It might be something that, that happened when you were younger, or maybe it just happened the other day. But in the midst of your tears, in the midst of your anguish, cry out to Jehovah Rapha and ask him to put you back together. If you're struggling with a broken relationship, I encourage you to do what Romans 12, 18 says. And it says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Let's look at physical healing. Some of you, some of you might be experiencing a tough time right now. You're trying to deal with the pain and discouragement uh, that, that comes up about with physical difficulties. Maybe if you're, you're, you're sick or you're in pain because of a broken, you know, you have a broken arm or, or there's some internal issues going on. 
Maybe you are just devastated by the news that you've received some, you know, some about a loss of a family member or a loss of a friend. It's at times like this that we need to ask Jehovah Rapha to do his healing work in our lives. The Bible is filled with examples of God, uh, examples of God healing people. Let's go to back to old uh, to the Old Testament and 2 Kings 20 verses 5 and 6. We read that uh, Hezekiah became very ill and was about to die. But as a result of intense intercession, he was healed and his life was extended. Listen to this. It says, thus says the Lord, the God of your father, David, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. I will add 15 years to your life. In the gospel, we see that Jesus spent a surprising amount of time healing people. If we go to Mark 8, verses 23 through 26, Jesus heals the blind man. Now, this is an incredible story, and if you're not, if you're not, if you don't listen to it and read it closely, you miss it. See, Jesus heals the blind man twice, and that's what's interesting about this is that he heals him of his sight, and so that's one healing, but then he heals him of agnosia. Now, agnosia is the inability to recognize objects. In Mark 8, 23, Jesus asked the man after he healed him of his sight and gave him his sight back, Jesus asked the man if he saw anything. And the man's response was that he saw men like trees. So he was unable to, to interpret what he saw. He was unable to distinguish what he saw and, and, and make it and, and, and be more specific about what he see, what he's seen. The, so Jesus laid his hands on the man again. And it was then that Jesus healed him a second time. Let's look at verse 25. He, that's the blind man, looked intently and was restored and began to see everything clearly. Jesus healed the deaf man in Mark 7, 33. You know, and, and again, he healed them, but then he had speech. So now he could speak, but, you know, how do you, there was no, you know, American saying language. He, there was no, there was no way for him to communicate. But all of a sudden, now he had the power of speech. He had the ability to, to talk to people. That's God healing him of his physical ailments, but then giving him the, the ability to speak and to share and to, and to tell people what's going on. So he heals them. Jesus heals people. You know, Jehovah, and so let's look at spiritual healing. This is by far the most important of the three realms of healing. Yes, we want physical healing. Yes, we want emotional healing. But really what it comes down to is the spiritual healing. Jehovah Rapha sees that we are spiritually sick. He provides healing and wholeness through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because get this, understand this, that our diagnosis is bad. The prognosis, is, uh, the prognosis is death for those of us that don't know Jesus. It's terminal. So in Jeremiah 17, 9, it describes the condition of the human heart. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? We are sinners who have been inflicted with the disease of death. We are in desperate need of a new heart. In Luke 4, 18, we read how Jesus got up in the synagogue one day and quoted from the book of Isaiah. And he said, we, he has been sent to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of the sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. See, once we are set free spiritually, Jesus can break every bondage or addiction we are under. While it's certainly true that Jesus healed a lot of people physically, his priority is curing our sin problem. If we go back to Isaiah chapters 1, verses 5 and 6, it talks about the pervasiveness of sin. Where will you be stricken again as you continue in your rebellion? The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. From the sole to the foot, the, from the sole of the foot, even to the head, there is nothing sound in it, only bruises, welts, and raw wounds, not pressed out or bandaged, nor softened with oil. Our depravity is total, affecting every part of our lives. But in verse 18, it provides some good news, showing the cleansing power of forgiveness. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they will be like wool. When we go through tough times emotionally, physically, spiritually, we're really entering a time of testing. Yes, go to professionals. If you're physically sick, emotionally sick, go to professionals. But first, go to the great physician. 
God can heal and restore us, but God also works his healing through doctors, other trained professionals, and through medicine. God can heal with just a word from his mouth, but he also uses other instruments for you for, for his will to be done. We need a church family. James 5, 14 through 16, it describes what we should do when we are sick. First, it says what? We should you know, call for the elders of the church and ask for prayer. We should confess any sin that we have to others. Third, pray for each other. That's important. We have to pray for each other. But for that to happen, we that are sick or that are hurting need to let people know. You can't keep that, that pain, that anguish, that sickness to yourself. We are a church family not because we want to know the gossip. We're a church family because we hold each other accountable, because we love each other, and we lift each other up in, in time of in, in prayer. And so that's what a church family does. So these steps are only possible if you're plugged into a church family. When you're hurting, you need the help of others. Listen to the story. Uh, the story is called Comforters, and it's adapted from Linda May Richardson. And this is part of her story. It says, when I was diagnosed with a deadly disease, my first friend came and expressed shock by saying, I can't believe you're sick. Always thought you were so active and healthy. He left and I felt alienated and somehow very different. My second friend came and, and brought me information about different treatments and gave me his opinion on what to do. He left. I felt scared and confused. My third friend came and tried to answer my whys. It told me God may be disciplining me for some sin in my life. She left and I felt guilty. My fourth friend came and told me that if my faith was greater, God would heal me. He left and I felt like my faith must be inadequate. My fifth friend came and told me to remember that all things work together for good, which is also, just a side note, is, is a misquoted scripture in the Bible. She left and I felt angry. My sixth friend never came at all. I felt sad and alone. My seventh friend came and held my hand and said, I care. I'm here. I want to help you through this. She left. I felt loved. I knew everything was going to be okay. See, don't lose faith in the power of he healing. Look at Mark 6, 5 through 6. This passage explains the importance of faith to G in Jesus. He could not do miracles there except that he laid his hands on a few people and healed them. And he wondered at their unbelief. Faith unleashes the power, the healing power of God. We need to understand that healing takes place in unusual ways. Yes, there's the healing where the person is, it gets well out of the hospital and is able to continue their life here on earth. But there's also the healing where they're no longer hurting, that they're made whole in heaven. We need to understand that. See, we should not pray for our will, but God's will. We lift these petitions up, but for God's will to be done. So many of us have, have lost, lost family members. And I've shared this story before about my mom when my mom passed. Yes, I prayed for her to be healed. I prayed for her to get out of the hospital and to, and to be well and to be able to, 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 to hang out and, and to continue to be here on earth. But God did greater he healed her so he, she wouldn't be hurting. He healed her so that she wouldn't be living with the constant pain that she had. She is well, and she is where she needs to be, and that's in heaven. My want does not usurp God's will. The, you see, the cross of Christ is the source of healing. The Jehovah who heals in the Old Testament is the Jesus who heals in the New Testament. So don't let people say that, yes, you know, yes, absolutely, God can be testing you. But that's not the only reason. You know, sometimes, like Jesus says in the New Testament, he talked about, you know, when they were, when, when they were he was healing the sick. And they said, well, you know, the guy's lame. This man is lame because there's sin in his life or there's sin in his parents' life. And Jesus said, no, he's just, he's just lame because he's lame. Sometimes it's just because. But we still seek the we seek our Father's face. We still seek His will to be done in our lives. So don't don't let anybody tell you that you you don't believe enough or you don't have enough faith because something didn't happen. 
Maybe that something didn't happen because that's not God's will for that, per that, for that person's life. But we continue to pray. We continue to have faith in Jehovah Rapha that he will make all things right. See, the Jehovah who heals in the Old Testament is the Jesus who heals in the New Testament, and he's still healing today. But it, not, might, it might not be the healing we want, but it's the healing that according to God's will. Isaiah 55, 53, 5 says, The chastening of our well-being fell upon him and his scourging. We are healed. In 1 Peter 2, 24, it picks up on the same prophecy. He says, And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds we are healed. More than a physical healing, more than emotional healing. The priority is the spiritual healing. So if you're hurting today emotionally, if you're hurting today physically, if you're hurting today spiritually, turn to Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals, and lift, it, lift that petition up to him and seek his face. Seek his will for your life. Amen? Amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, Father God, we do thank you, Father, that we can come to you, Father. Father, I do lift up those that have lost loved ones, Father. Father, I pray, Father, that you heal them emotionally, Father. Father, in the days, the weeks, the months to come, Father, that you minister to them, Father, that you put people in their past to minister to them, Father. Let them open, let, let their mind and their heart be open to receive you, Father. Father, we thank you for that we can come to you, Father, and lift these petitions up to you, Father. Father, let us not lose sight, Father. Father, of your will, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. A couple of announcements. Don't forget, this Saturday from 9 to 11 at both campuses, we're doing Taking Down of the Greens. So the more people that show up, the less time it takes. Uh, it's a great time of fellowship, but also an opportunity just to serve the church and get plugged in, get to meet people and fellowship with people you might not know that well. Uh, don't forget to be in church on Sunday. Uh, look forward to seeing you there. God bless.